Good day, my dear friends. A little update on my investment plan. Crypto continues to go up and is now at 280 billion for the first time um, above the trend line uh, of Trullolo. Um, and um, we are now in overvaluation. But of course, you could say it's actually fair valuation because we're at the trend line. Um, so yeah, if you have no crypto yet, you can still buy. It's uh, valued fairly. It's not overvalued in the long term. It's also not undervalued anymore, uh, but it's still very fairly valued. So if you have <coughs> not invested enough or not invested at all, you can still buy. Um, uh, in my case, uh, my exposure continues to go up. If you have invested in crypto in the past and it just goes up with the market and your exposure, crypto exposure goes up automatically, so you don't need to invest anymore. Um, but uh, of course, um, what about the future? I've always said, like, don't, I, you, you want to try to correct your mistakes on a, on a correction, but it all depends on how urgent is it? Like if it's absolutely urgent, if you have no exposure yet, then you need to buy at market. But let's say that you bought only half of what you wanted to buy. Well, that's not urgent at all because you bought half. In my case, for example, I did uh, buy 40%, but I wanted to buy 80% at the bottom. And if that indeed was the bottom, well, well, I bought only half, but that, that's not urgent to be corrected <clears throat> because there are always corrections where you can do that. Um, in my case, though, I am increasing or lowering the price that I'm willing to correct my mistake uh, because, um, yes, I bought only half of the crypto that I want and I do want to buy double, but because this rally is so exceptional to the upside uh, for anyone who has been analyzing the markets uh, or just look at my previous video about the bull bear cycle the the white line the price is deviating so far away from the bull bear cycle that we've never seen this in history this chart is not updated this white line now goes above the red line uh, but um, nowhere do you see a white line going so far away, except in 2011. You do see it happen in 2011, but this was the early days. Bitcoin had a market cap of 100 million, uh, not a market cap of 100 billion. Uh, that's a very big difference as a 100x multiplier. So with larger market caps, you expect less volatility. Yet this is not what we're seeing here. We see the same kind of basically yeah deviation from the trend line <clears throat> as we've seen here and here also it went from minus 50 percent undervaluation to plus 10 percent it's the same story here from minus 50 percent undervaluation and we're now almost at plus uh 10 percent <clears throat> we're at plus three percent so something similar as 2011 is happening here what happened there was that it actually did go back to the trend line the blue line but since markets were uh, prices were going up a lot in the beginning that did mean that in fiat prices it only went sideways it didn't collapse but i do think chances are very high we will go back to the trend line and that means today that yes it needs to collapse and collapse in fiat prices back to a 100 billion valuation we're almost at 300 billion as good by three but as i said in previous video i really believe that it actually will undershoot strongly uh, and we will see a new bottom that, that i think is the highest probability probable scenario that's why i'm also becoming more uh, the higher the market goes and the more uh, out of touch with reality it goes i believe just by reversion to the mean that yes you can be more um uh, strict and more um uh, yeah in, in, in set, it, it basically you can lower your buy price as well because just be, because of reversion to the mean but also because well, what happens when you have a, a market that's out of touch with reality and, and prices go higher and higher, even though fundamentals look bad and the market is not ready for a new bull market, as we see today, uh, fundamentals in adoption are bad, the amount of transactions 
is not going up the way it should be in at the start of a bull market. Sorry, I didn't verify this. It's just a good feeling. But other metrics are that. Yeah, the NVTS is not in in the green zone, which means that it's undervalued for for real compared to the amount of transactions. That's not the case right now. So here you see the chart of a uh, throwaway um, a, a Bitcoin network momentum uh, NVTS, and um, yeah, this should be like valued lowly the amount of transaction on chain on chain compared to the uh, price of Bitcoin at the beginning of a bull market. It should be cheap, and at the peak. For example, here in 20, I, I don't have the numbers here. This is uh, 20, um, the bear market of 2013, 14, 14 and 15. 14 goes down the price, 15 sideways. Uh, but NVTS goes down and becomes cheap towards here. When the bull market has started, you have the first breakout. It early 2015 uh, and then it goes sideways for a while but NVTS becomes very cheap and it's relatively cheap no this is not the one I wanted to show actually I don't think this is the right one yeah it was this one that I was looking for um, NVTS, uh, but it is the NVT, not the NVTS. But uh, here you can see it's green uh, in the middle. Um, actually, it's it's going down over time during the bear market of 2013. Uh, sorry, uh, 2013 is a bull market. 2014 is the bear market, and 2015 is a sideways movement. Uh, during this sideways movement, when the bottom was in the period after, you see that NVTS. Uh, goes up a little down a little but it's relatively low compared to the the bull markets and even uh, when you have the breakout here uh, because amount of transactions pick up NVTS uh, does uh, pick up pick up more than the amount of uh, than the price that goes up NVTS actually goes down and actually the Bitcoin comes relatively cheap um, as you can see in the middle down there the, it becomes green early 2016 after the breakout this is totally not happening right now uh, at the end of the we are going up 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 in NVTS and we are at valuations higher than the bull market it's very rare uh, weird but this is the chart of uh, NVT which has, was posted here by um, throwaway on May 15th uh, but the, the past uh, tw two weeks he hasn't been posting this one anymore maybe the d data was wrong on this uh, so if we go to his most recent uh, posts, uh, this one, uh, it's also interesting because you see the same pattern, just not so extreme. The NVTS, this is called, uh, and you see, yes, we are in, in, in very high valuations here. Um, and so we are uh, certainly due for a correction, another small correction of a big one. Uh, but... Um, yeah, uh, the pattern here in 2015 uh, after the breakout is also that the NVTS, NVTS is low and cheap. And on the breakout, it goes up also. Uh, so you could say, yeah, okay, so, so, so this is like that period. It just goes up. But it, here it goes up to all-time highs. Here it just goes, it's on a trend down, it shoots up, but it always goes up less, less and less. And, and of course, even then you have strong correction, you have a 40% correction after this breakout move. Uh, so that certainly is to come, even if it's a successful breakout. But um, yeah, as you can see on another chart, uh, the, the, we are not here... Um, at the at the low point we are at a, an all-time high point and then the correction is actually not on average 40 percent it's on average 70 percent 
uh, it's it's corrections like this when you're at all-time highs when you're at red zones here uh, then then you get correction of 70 percent and that's the most likely scenario that we're gonna get um, crypto made use did the calculation here uh, based on the same chart from throwaway that at current and nvts levels on average the correction was 73 percent and um, if we do that from the all-time high the all-time high was um, 8900 and uh, we do a, 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 a not all-time high but of this uh, rally the past six months 8900 was all-time high if we do minus 30 uh, 73 percent we get we get about 2200 let me do this here at 2400 is minus 73 almost uh, so so that's 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 where we would go historically as a correction at 2400 but that's 73 percent but i think that this is not so likely because once we break the uh, low of 3050 i think momentum will become stronger uh, than uh, going to only 2400 that's not much deeper than the previous bottom i do think we will go r below 2000 and so see 1900 uh before it goes back up so if you set your buy orders at 2000 i think you have a good chance to see them filled uh, and so uh, that's why i set this at um minus uh, 80 percent undervaluation yeah and then we will reach um 1900 and this is also the maximum undervaluation i think is possible in this bear market um yeah uh, so so i'm thinking that we see maximum undervaluation also together with the fiat bottom this time <clears throat> and yeah right below 2000 that's what i think is likely to happen um yeah i i think this is more likely than seeing minus uh 75 undervaluation and only seeing a bottom of 2400 i don't think that's so likely just just because what's happening today in this uh major rally is that you have a lot of formal buying so that means that people had have cash on the sidelines and were planning to buy lower than 3050 and because they didn't buy when we were at 3500 because they thought it, it would go lower and so many people that do, did have cash on the sidelines are today and uh, have for the past uh, six months decided to buy back in uh, and 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 uh, and so they don't have cash anymore and, and 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 that has caused the price to also pump a lot but that means that who, who will buy below this price not not so many um because many will consider their investment thesis wrong um because most people that buy uh, above uh, 4000 5000 6000 7000 they believe that the bottom was in here and the bull market has started so when 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 we reach that price or if of course if it's not not sure at all i think it's likely to happen but it may not happen at all but if it happens then it's actually not so likely we will find the bottom at 2400 because there are not many buyers left uh, and, and you will have a, a, a new load of sellers because so many people thought this was the bottom when they discovered that's not the case some of them instead of buying they might actually decide to sell because they might believe it's going to go much lower than 1900 they might fear it will it may go to thousand or to or below thousand so that's what motivates people to sell so i think actually as a new bottom this is likely to happen and also you need to get paid like this is uh, a lot of work actually not to be in the market right now um it's frustrating it's difficult uh, the fear of being left behind dealing with that you do want to get paid if you prove to be right so buying at 2400 um uh, well, you're not get, going to get fully paid. Uh, you can actually get them at 2000. I think 2000 is a good price point because, yeah, I think it's likely we will go below that. 
So I set this as my new target. Uh, and it also has a very big influence on the prices of the other coins that I actually want to buy. I don't want to buy Bitcoin ever again in my life. But I'm buying Bitcoin BCH. Um, but if, 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 if Bitcoin goes below 2000, that also means Bitcoin BCH cannot stay above $75. That's it's it's not and and also Bitcoin Cash, my favorite coin, will also make a new low. And the moment it makes a new low, is the same story as all the other coins. It will go a lot lower, uh, and so it will be cut by two at least. And so that's where I plan to buy my last buy for Bitcoin Cash, and plan to raise to eighty percent exposure, but not higher. Um, and so. I have one buy in between and that's for that I think has become very likely it's actually going to test the bottom for real meaning we are going to get very close to that fiat price. I think that this has become very likely and that's where I set my buy order uh, my first buy order and that means in my case for Bitcoin cash I will set it around $140. So these things always change over time uh, but yeah think it's the right move to um to uh to set buy orders lower uh considering how high we're going in this rally uh simply reversion to the mean and 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 just the lack of buyers uh, that will be here at these prices due to this rally uh yeah uh, i think makes it more likely to see these prices uh, and it makes all a very big difference so you can set this if you want more certainty yeah you can set this as Minus 55% undervaluation at 4,400, as many people say today, like we should have, see a correction at least to here. Or some people, uh, I most uh, say, no, no, we should see at least a correction to to, to 5,000 plus. Uh, so set your buy the orders here. Yes, but that all makes a very big difference in how many coins you're going to get. Uh, but of course, you need to do that if you're seriously under invested. Yes, this is, of course, smarter. To put buy orders than 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 the, the lower prices I aim for, uh, but it all depends on how much exposure you have right now. But in my case, I'm uh, enough invested uh, to try this one. But I, I just set basically ten percent extra, and and you get about three thousand four hundred. So this is too low for me. I think we, we testing of the bottom last bear market it was. 30% higher, so I think this bear market will be 10% higher, like that's a safe, uh, with, with some margin of safety included. I think actually we might actually go close to this price. We might see 3,200, 3,300, something like that. So I set it at above 3,400 and, and, uh, and that's good for me. And I look at the equivalence for Ethereum and um, Bitcoin Cash uh, to set my buy orders. And of course, what also gives me confidence to like set my orders relatively low is that I discovered another great investment, Tesla. Uh, and that's very important. Uh, that's ha very helpful that you have an alternative in case it doesn't work out. And, 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 the, and it is a great alternative Currently, the price is $190, but um, yeah, in, in this kind of, actually the same the same applies in this kind of um, stocks. You can, it's also a parabolic growth curve. I haven't done the work on this one, huh? but just based on current prices and, and future expected growth, uh, you probably can pull one like this that goes a little bit like this. So right now you're seriously undervalued compared to the logarithmic trend line. You're at valuations $190 that well, were reached in 2014 uh, and that's 2013. Uh, in 2013 it was reached for the first time. Of course that was an overvaluation then, but it has been above this price since 2014. That's five years now. So so you can buy at prices about uh, uh, that were the, the case five years ago so yeah uh, or, or, or or in 2016 was the last time we could buy at this price 
in 2016. It's three years ago, but this is a fast growing company. So that's a great buy right now. And uh, if you look at, at, at the kind of correction here, we went, uh, the peak was three, three $380. We're now at 190 So that's uh, good by two. Exactly good by two now. If you look at fast growing companies like Apple at the time, how often does it happen that it's good by two before it continues its rise? It's quite rare. Uh, in strong rises here, in, in Apple, for example, went from $2 to uh, $5 in 2005. But after that, it didn't correct much. It went from $5. No, it didn't correct anything. Continues to go up to $10. Then it has a correction. But how low does it go? To $8. Only 20% correction. Continued from $8 to $27. Makes a correction to $16. Here you have a first 50% percent correction from 27 till 16 17 so it's it's not exactly 50 percent it's a little bit less 50 45 go back up to 27 double top and then you make a correction to 13 dollars so now you finally have that 50 percent correction a little bit similar to what tesla did here i did a couple of corrections here uh, uh let's say from 380 to the bottom here to 60 but that's not 50 percent so uh, it takes a while but it also has finally that 50 percent correction here also with apple finally that 50 percent correction what happens after in 2009 it goes from 20 dollars before it sees another correction goes to 100 dollars times five takes several years four years uh does times five in four years and only then it sees a big correction again with Google, uh, also here, it starts at uh, $50. It goes up to $312, very similar to Tesla. That also started at uh, $20 and went up to uh, $380. Uh, Google starts here at $50, also goes up to $350. Uh, and then it also sees a correction to $200, here $170 uh, from $330. 350, 250. So you see also cut by two Google here in the beginning. What happens after? Well, it goes up for many, many years. There's never a 50% correction up until today from 150 to 1,150. So times seven or so. And many, many years, huh? eight years and never a 50% correction. So it is very rare for a fast growing company to see a 50% correction. And if it happens, as you can see today, so many people, oh, but you can buy $190, wait for 150 and wait for 100. Uh, 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 but that's, that's, not, that's not wise. There is no historical precedent for fast growing companies that are able to double their uh, uh, sales every year um or um, gross uh, revenue uh, to see 50 percent correction is very rare so if you have that take that opportunity because well it's very likely to go away soon and then it will be up so odds for tesla to double in only one year is very high uh, that's exactly what happened with these companies 150 one year later you're at 300 again here for Google in only one year from 150 to 300, not breaching the all time high, but almost there for Apple when it made a big correction. How long did it take here? And by the way, for Google, for Apple, this happened in the, in the financial crisis of 2008 that it lost 50%. So that was, uh, yeah. Uh, but how long did it take for it to make it back up? One year, one year is back to all time high. So uh, one year is most likely where we will see back $380. So you can double your money in one year. In the meantime, crypto can actually go to a new low. So it's a, a very good diversification for the short term and the long term. Because you don't need to sell this after one year when you just doubled your money. 
you can just keep it because very likely it will not 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 just do that it will do again times four or five the next years after from that price okay it's not a sure thing at all that tesla is the next google or the next apple that might be not the case it might fail there is a small chance but we talk about potential here everything might fail bitcoin and the whole crypto industry might fail too so but if we look at potential here and we base it on past growth and we extrapolate past growth then for tesla it will reach in five years 1600 per share we're now 190 so in one year it's, it's like at 300 again and in five years we're at 1600 this is a price based on past growth it has grown with 40 percent per year tesla prices from the start of 2010 when it did an ipo till 2018 when it reached about 350 dollars if you don't count this last correction if you look at growth from here to here that's 40 percent per year very likely it will continue to do this for another five years ten years of course it will also have strong corrections sometimes but at peak valuations you will see this 40 percent compound growth rate come back at peak valuations and that means that in five years we may reach peak valuation of around 1600 and then it may correct again maybe a 50 percent hmm? So, but this is great to find an alternative investment because it allows you to be also a little bit more um, um, demanding for your other investments, the same as it goes with friendships or jobs or girlfriends. If you have alternatives, you can be more demanding of the other ones and it's a good strategy. And I'm very happy to have found uh, uh, an opportunity here. So the question is then, how much do you invest in Tesla? In my case, well, I have 50% cash. I'm planning to invest about half of it in it at this point in time. So 25% and the other 25% I keep uh, as buy orders. Uh, but my investment strategy stays the same. I plan to be 80 percent invested means i plan to be 70 percent invested if we reach these prices 140 dollars for bitcoin cash if we test the bottom then yes i will sell some tesla to make sure that i'm 70 percent invested in crypto and if we continue to go down to new lows i will sell more tesla and so for example today i have about let's say i have 10,000 uh, capital about five thousand us dollars uh, in tesla uh, not in tesla but i put about 2500 in but the moment it crashes here i will have to sell a little bit of tesla because i will only have thousand uh, nine hundred cash uh, that i want to leave and so uh, tesla will be 2500 so i have to sell some but not much but if we do go even much deeper well i have to sell a lot more of tesla because i have 2500 tesla let's say it doesn't go up in the meantime well, I have to sell about four, four fifth of my Tesla to make sure that I'm 80% invested in crypto. That's my plan. But that's only when this, this works out. It could be that I, it doesn't reach these prices anymore. And I was wrong about the market direction and expectations were wrong, my expectations. So I have to find an alternative investment uh, for my cash. That's why I invest today half of my cash in Tesla because I'm not sure. I will be able to use this cash in crypto so i have to look also ahead and already start um, investing in other opportunities that's why i do half crypto medias also made a new uh, updated chart here of the volume on this breakout uh, and uh, as you can see the volume is picking up here on this breakout we get some decent candles and that's of course uh, good good news for the bulls but uh, how decent are they are they comparable to the breakout in 2015 no you can see that this 
candle here on the blow off top of the breakout was much higher than any candle before but you can even see but not certainly not there yet we should see a candle up to here then somewhere but you can also see that even the volume before uh, on this breakout is much higher than the previous breakouts but this volume is even much higher than the bull market than the when the bull market when those massive uh, high tops were reached in 2013 and this when bitcoin went up from hundred dollars to thousand dollars this volume is much lower than the breakout and look at this volume here compared to when we made the tops here of twenty thousand us dollars these volumes are much higher than these volumes so the volumes are still very low uh, for for this breakout even though candles are picking up we're not there yet but the prices have reached breakout prices clearly huh we're above six thousand here i mean this is the price has broken out so it's very strange um, and, and and the only thing i can think of what's happening in this market is that you have just some people with uh, lots of capital that are able to manipulate prices and make it look bullish by buying up with pretty low volume they're able to buy up coins and, and they might like just want to be invested in in in, in crypto uh, and they might not want to manipulate prices but they just have an urgency to be invested in, in in crypto that's possible it might not be bad intended but it seems that this is not widely supported by the market uh, at least not if you look at volumes uh, and so i think it's more like some small play a, a few players with lots of capital that are uh, making this uh, these moves happen and the moment they have enough uh, they are and the moment they are out of the market these prices can no longer be supported that's my guess there's also a fair critique um like uh, i simplified this here but but it looks like the the potential um like if you look at the top valuations uh, that we will reach probably for crypto mm. I, I, i've played a little bit with the number but i think 500 percent overvaluation is possible you can keep it a little bit more modest you could say 450 but i do think you have to realist be realistic in these things i like in all directions just try to be realistic that's why i set these prices not I want to be realistic. I think this is a more realistic estimate that we tip below 2000, that we stay above 2000. Uh, but similarly here, like, yes, I think for 450, actually, no, because we saw 700% overvaluation in the last bubble. Um, I do think we will see 500% overvaluation in the next one. And so that means like for Bitcoin Cash, yes, it will reach 100,000, but Bitcoin BTC will reach only 250. Uh, sorry 150,000 so 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 but yeah I, even though I said before that yeah in the next bubble Bitcoin cash will breach will breach uh, Bitcoin's uh, valuation actually with this I say no that's not going to happen in the next bubble yet only Ethereum will succeed in becoming bigger than than Bitcoin BTC but Bitcoin cash not yet but financially Bitcoin cash is the much better investment than Bitcoin because Bitcoin will only do at the peak, at its peak valuation, a 17x. Whereas Bitcoin Cash will do a 200x. And that's from current valuations. And, and, and we are already up a lot with Bitcoin uh, Cash, a lot more than Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin went times three. Bitcoin Cash went times five from its lower. So, huh? so um, um, yeah, no, but I'm six Bitcoin Cash. But from current valuation, this is still by a, a, a 10 times better, more than 10 times better investment, uh, Bitcoin Cash. So the risk reward is, is very, very good for Bitcoin Cash even now. So why, why do I decide today to invest 
25% in Tesla and only 50% in Bitcoin Cash. That does not make sense from a risk reward perspective because uh, the potential for Tesla is only 20 times. And you can see like, I think this is a reasonable price. Like this is if past growth continues, we will reach this price. But I also set a price that's much higher than this, like two times higher. Um, why? Uh, because um, bubbles happen, overvaluation happens also in these growth stocks. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly get double the valuation um, or double and a half the valuation I have here uh, than, than this at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that would be serious overvaluation, but that's the same is true for these. They are seriously overvalued. They are peaking out, and after this, they will at least correct 90%. The same is true for a, a growth stock. Huh? But you can see at peak valuations, uh, the potential for a, 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 a Tesla is, is 20x from, from today's valuations. That's the same as just Bitcoin BTC. So that, that's not a great investment compared to like it's 10 times worse. The risk reward is 10 times worse than Bitcoin Cash. So you should have 10 times less invested in Tesla than in Bitcoin uh, BTC mm -hmm. at current valuations. Mm -hmm. So I should be like 90. If I'm 50% in crypto, I should be only 5% in Tesla and the rest cash. But the problem here is, of course, that there's this other rule uh, when you invest and it is the rule I really like is, well, only invest when the opportunity is there, not when it's chasing away from you. And yeah, that means that I'm not willing to invest more in this, even though, even though at current valuations, yes, it's still a much better risk reward than Tesla, but I'm not willing to do that. Um, inversely, even though Tesla is 10 times worse investment than Bitcoin Cash, the opportunity is there right now. And so I do want to invest much more in it than only one tenth of my Bitcoin cash investment. Yeah. So, but of course I keep a very close eye on these things because when right now, the only thing I can do is invest in Tesla. There is just no chance. I can't invest in, in Bitcoin cash now. So I have to look at my cash position not at my total portfolio, but at my cash position that, and the scenarios eh, that I, I missed the train here and, and it's gone. So what do I do with my cash? And, and that's the question. But if there's a, an opportunity in the future, if it does correct to price targets that I think is likely, yes, then I will totally follow this, uh, th these, these facts that the risk reward is much higher for Bitcoin Cash. And so that's why I'm willing then to indeed sell a lot of my Tesla in exchange for Bitcoin Cash because the opportunity is there then. But only then I would be willing to do that. Thanks so much for watching.